And the Most High is saying, listen, he's telling him the whole time. I've been here the whole time. I've been in your churches. That's what the Most High is telling you. I've been in your churches. Some might ask, what you mean? Regardless of that pastor that was there, the Bible was in front of you. I've been with you the whole time. My name been in the book the whole time. Why haven't you read it? I've been here the whole time. That's what God is telling you. And you're looking from hill to mountain, going over to Buddhist, going over to that. And he's saying, listen, it was upon you to find me. It was upon you to read the word and study to show yourself approved. I, I was in front of you the whole time. Right? And now our people are being brought to their knees. You, we're going to be, you're going to be forced to find our God because you're going to have to realize that we've been double crossed. We have been double crossed by our enemies. They double crossed us. They knew we were spiritual people, so they had to what? Supplement what was missing through their false religion as what? A means of control over the children of God. They knew we were searching for something spiritual, so they had to supplement it. But what they supplemented it with circumvented us. It allowed the wolf into the hen house. It's through these religions, we allow them to come into our neighborhoods and, 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 and rip us apart economically in every other way. Romans 10 and 13, let's read it. Romans 10, verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, here it is, brothers and sisters, the apostles, the disciples. They all knew this. They all knew this. So when Christ came and set up the apostles, set up Paul, Paul wrote to the churches what? That what? Read it again, Elder Lawyer. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the enemies knew this. So when we, when our people went into captivity, they gave our people the names of their gods who empowers them over us. I'm talking top, top sorcerers. Who are, who are so-called now called psychologists came up with this idea, came up with these ideas to keep us in spiritual bondage. Let's supplement their God. Let's replace their God with ours. And through, and through that tactic, they will become perpetual slaves, voluntary slaves. They're praying to the gods who've empowered us to stomp them out, who've empowered us to be their masters. See, whosoever shall call on the, the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Read. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? But how can you call on a God in whom you have not heard? We are depending on our enemies to, de to deliver the true name of our God. The God who delivered us out of Egypt. Are you depending on your enemy for that? And it's funny. Here's the funny part about it. Here's the deep. I'm going to show you how, how great uh, uh, some people's darkness is, th their darkness is out there. Before the Most High, through the Spirit of the Most High, had us come up with a lesson called the true name of God, you had every Hebrew out there saying that his name was Yahweh or, or Yahweh. Without any pushback, they was coming down on Christians for calling on Jesus upholding the tetragrammaton that was given to them by the Jewish rabbis, by Esau. But once the name of the Most High came out there, it started resonating amongst the Hebrews. Because why? 
it contradicted their stance that they were using against Christians. Well, suppose they were doing the same thing. They were antagonizing the Christians for using God and Jesus, claiming they knew the true name, which was a tetragrammaton, the four letter Yahweh. But when the name of the Most High came out, then when it, when I, when it's read, it was right there in the Bible, in the same Bible they're teaching. He started scratching his head and said, how can I get around this? This is God. The only place in the book where God tells Moses his name. That's God speaking. So if I reject this, am I rejecting? Do I believe in this God? Uh, do I, you know, is this the God who gave me the commandments? I'm, I'm stomping the ground for and telling people to repent. So it started contradicting things for them. But instead of them saying, you know what? This is what the Most High said. I'll accept that. No. They started coming up with misdirection. Well, the laws is more important than his name. No one knows his name right now until Christ come back when Christ reveals a new name. So we're just going to call him Jesus until he comes. Right back at square one, Christian church. They would rather go right back to the deception that they argued against instead of accepting what God said. And this is what Christ said, that if your light be darkness, how great is that darkness? How can you argue with what came out of the Most High's mouth? The only time he actually stated to mankind his name. Let's read it again. Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they call, believe in him in whom they have not heard? How can you believe on that God who delivered us? Whom you have not heard. Not only the Gentiles, but even our Hebrew, Hebrews aren't saying it. The, the first thing Moses asked the Most High was, okay, I know you're going to send me to save the people, but who can I say is sending me? That was his first question. And that was before he gave us the commandments. So don't try to play off the commandments against the name. That's, a, that's right. That's a purposeful misdirection to, to get away from, from the fact that you are denying his name. You can have his name and follow the commandments too. So they'll even butcher scriptures that don't have anything to do with the topic and say, see the laws over the name. And the scripture's not even saying that. Read it. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Read it again. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how will you hear the name of God without a preacher? It's right there in the Bible. Folks, there's only one name. Allah is a fallen God. Jovi, Yahweh, Zeus, is a fallen God. The Hindus, they worship, look at their religion, go into their religion. They worship fallen deities, gods, demons. Even D Diva was a fallen goddess. When they say she's a, she's a diva, that came from East Indian. That's a fallen goddess. Shiva, fallen gods, idols. Psalms 96 and 4, real, real quick, other Lord. 5. Y'all doing a great job. Please hit the like button because we're about to go in on these Gentiles here, these heathens. Psalms 96, verse 4. Come on. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Our God is greatly to be praised. Folks, you notice that we've been consistent since this ministry began. 